it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles. And today, we're going to Spain. I even have my passport. Actually, we're not going to Spain. A little bit of Spain is coming to us. See, I imported two motorcycles from Europe and we're going to the Jacksonville port to pick them up. How did I do it? Well, this is my first time importing motorcycles. I did bring a car over here maybe 20 years ago. But if you're thinking about importing motorcycles right now with the dollar high against the euro, you might be. Follow me, I'll tell you how I did it. And we'll see. All right, so we're hooking up the trailer because we're gonna go to the port in Jacksonville to pick up two motorcycles. Can you guess what they are? Well, they're from Spain, so Montessa. I actually like Montessa, but for every 10 Bull Taco dealers, there was like one Montessa dealer. So Montessas are a little bit harder to, to work on and acquire parts. You're pretty much stuck getting your stuff for Spanish Montessas from Spain. So we got two Bull Tacos, but which ones? Hmm. Well, we're gonna hold that in abeyance as we get ready and on the way down, I'll tell you how much this costs just to bring them over. So while we're gassing up, I'll tell you about how much this adventure is costing me. Not including gas. So I bought two bikes from Spain for an undisclosed sum. And I had to have them crated for shipping. Trading was 100 euro each, so that's 200 euro. Now, a euro right now is about a dollar four. But when I did this two months ago, it was a dollar 20. I thought I was getting a deal because before that it was a dollar 45. So right now is a bargain. It's not that the dollar is doing exceptionally well, it's that the euro is in the toilet. Shipping was 13.45 for both bikes. That's about a 25% discount that I ship each bike individually. So today that's about 1,350 bucks. On top of that, I have a cheat sheet here. I had to pay the, I got myself an import broker. The seller over there had an export broker and that was the part of the 1345 which included the picking up of the bikes. The seller is the one that created them for me. He had to include some technical documents, sales literature and stuff so that we could prove to customs they were 25 years or older. My import broker, uh, he prepares something called an ISF and files it. That was $135. I had to pay taxes and duties. That was $260 for both bikes. I have to pay warehouse storage fees. The first four days is 150 bucks. And of course, customs took too long to clear the bikes. So it's $30 a day. Today is day five. I'm hoping to pick them up today. And I haven't got my final bill from the, uh, from my import broker. I'm sure there's gonna be a final bill. And uh, had customs gone through with the physical examination, I might have had a physical examination fee here they were held up because they needed some manifest documents which they probably had but apparently they're slow 
and maybe it's a scam to get an extra day or two of storage I don't know I'm guessing it's you know it's slowness from the government processing stuff anyway we are going to go to Jacksonville and uh, hopefully they'll release the bikes we'll figure out how to get them in the trailer and uh, we'll bring them back 22.4 gallons they stopped me at a hundred bucks oh boy so I got my final invoice from my import broker it took me all morning to get a hold of them because they're in California and my shipments on the East Coast so everything takes at least half a day longer and when you're paying storage by the day that has the potential to really screw you up because it's one o'clock now and I just got my final invoice and uh, I don't know what time the warehouse closes but my final invoice was a bit more than I expected it was about 430 bucks so all said the import broker took about 570 just shy of 600 bucks and I got to pay the warehouse and I'll get a total for you port of Jacksonville didn't really ever think of it as a port town it is loaded up here's how I do this I strap dollies and you can move the crate since we don't have a forklift and if I did have a forklift I couldn't forklift it on my ramp truck so while they're not sure it goes you know sort of what they are let's get back home I don't know if this place is any good, but we're stopping at Taco Queen in St. Augustine. So let's see how it looks. Mexican style pulled pork. So we are at our overflow building over there. And we are preparing to unload our Boltacos. Now you know the Boltacos, but which models? So I'll let you think about that. I'll give you a hint. The first one, think about a hit song in the late 70s by Ray Stevens. And the second one, an award-winning sack of flour. Yep, those are your hints. Now you can figure it's not going to be like an Alpina or a Sherpa. I had to import these from Spain, so it's going to be something models that are not common here. Well, they're around, they're just not common.
we got? Ugh. We're gonna stay up. We're gonna fall over. Don't look, Ethel! Here we go. And there she was, naked as a jaybird. It's a Boltaco streaker, the white model. This was the last, I guess you'd call it a Mark II. And uh, 1979, right before Boltaco closed its doors, This is after the feds decided no more two-stroke road bikes and I'm told they got sued over the motor for copying something from Suzuki's RL series but it became moot now I don't know looks like that got scrunched but We can fix it. We can make it better than it was. All right, so. All right, so let's look at the second one. This is a 1978 Boltaco Frontera gold medal, 370 cc's. Now, what I understand is these started out as something like a mark 10 Persang, but they weren't competitive and they were languishing a little bit on the sales floor now think of it in 78 japanese were well in their well in their way on monoshock and almost into water cooled so this was a, getting a little bit long in the tooth so they painted them up gold hung lights on them and sold them as a special edition Frontera gold medal, mostly in Europe. I don't know if they were imported here. Someone changed this to an up pipe. That would make it a proper dual sport. Can't have a down pipe on a dual sport if you're going to do a water crossing. There's the correct Persang down pipe. You'd have to swap out the head and the side cover. I'm probably not going to do that, but I wanted to have the pipe because that's the hard part. I don't have production numbers on these. This is their last model. 493. Now, streakers came in two forms. This is a 179. And you had a 204. Well, this is the 175 the 204 model would be a 125 204 black 204 a for white so this is probably 179 a for white again i don't have production numbers old taco a passion for the sport this is considered the Bible. Unfortunately, it doesn't have production numbers in it either. It has all the specifications. I got this on eBay. I didn't realize it until looking at it now. It's actually signed, signed by the guy that wrote the foreword. Ken McGuire. David, enjoy the passion. 3-7-2002. Man, that's 20 freaking years ago. So let's see, I got this poster, but I don't, I want to know if they're five speed or six speed. I have sales literature in the shop, which I should have brought over. Oh, here's a piece of sales literature. There, 74 or 125, depending on the model. Transmission. Six 
six speed. Cool. I'm told these little bikes really rip. And uh, we'll have to save that for another video. Because I gotta get these together. And then we'll we'll do a ride on another video. So check back or subscribe or follow me or do whatever you do. And I'll see you on the next one.